There is only one plane large enough, strong enough, and most importantly, wide enough to handle the job when NASA has to transport its massive spaceship components between production, testing, and launch facilities across the nation. The Aerospace Line's Super Guppy. The Super Guppy was initially created in 1962 as a replacement for the pregnant Guppy freight aircraft to transport NASA equipment throughout the nation. That is to say, it was the pregnant Guppy's successor, the first of Aerospace Line's Guppy airplanes. Five were produced in two variations, known as the Super Guppy in common parlance. The first, the Super Guppy, or SG, was constructed entirely from a C-97J turbo stratocruiser, the military adaptation of the Boeing 377 stratocruiser passenger aircraft from the 1950s. The cargo compartment was 94 feet 6 inches long, while the fuselage was stretched to 141 feet and blew out to a maximum internal diameter of 25 feet. Using the Stratocruiser fuselage resulted in the cargo compartment's floor being only 7 feet 9 inches wide. The Super Guppy employed redesigned wing and tail surfaces in addition to upgraded Pratt & Whitney T34P7WA turboprop engines for improved power and range. It could travel at a speed of 300 miles per hour and carry a payload of 54,000 pounds. Super Guppy experienced a fuselage collapse on September 25th while doing high-speed dives during certification tests after a month of testing. The upper fuselage disintegrated after beginning a dive at 10,000 feet. The 100-pound sacks containing the 30,000 pounds of borate being transported by the aircraft were ruptured, spilling powder that briefly rendered the crew blind. The crew could land on the dry bed of Rogers Dry Lake and save the aircraft with the aid of a DC-9 chase plane. At Edwards Air Force Base, Guppy's upper superstructure was later redesigned and reconstructed. Despite using turboprop engines like the first Super Guppy, the second model was formerly known as the Super Guppy Turbine, or SGT. In this variation, turboprops Allison 501D22C were used. However, the successor Super Guppy Turbine, or SGT, was completely original and not based on anything. SGT has a 156-foot wingspan and is 143 feet long and 37 feet tall. It has an internal cargo bay 25 feet tall, 25 feet wide and 111 feet long, or 39,000 cubic feet of cargo space. It can travel up to 564 miles at 290 miles per hour with a payload of up to 16,000 pounds or up to 2,000 miles with a payload of 26 tons. Early in the 1980s, two further SGTs produced by France's UTA Industries joined the original SG and SGT, which Airbus had constructed in the 1960s. The European Space Agency built the final and only SGT currently in operation to reimburse NASA for its assistance in transferring ESA components. There is still one Super Guppy in NASA service. One was scrapped and three are on exhibit. In 2016, the Orion capsule, a NASA spacecraft intended to transport people to Mars, began its next construction stage at Kennedy Space Center. NASA used its Super Guppy planes to transport Orion from New Orleans to Cape Canaveral. 
The payload was fairing and transported to Space Launch Complex 41 for lifting and mating to the Atlas V rocket for a launch targeted for September 8th. The heat shield container was unloaded from the guppy and transported to the high bay of the Neil Armstrong Operations and Checkout Building. The Apollo program served as Super Guppy's genesis. It was used to transport pieces of the Saturn V rocket from California to Florida in the 1960s. The alternative NASA had was to transport rocket stages across the Panama Canal, although this often required an additional few weeks or months. The giant aircraft have also been used to transport components from the International Space Station and NASA's supersonic planes. The largest heat shield ever constructed, Orion's, was transported to Florida in 2013 by the Super Guppy. Another notable event where the Super Guppy was used at NASA is the Artemis I project. The Super Guppy airplane carrying the Orion spacecraft for the Artemis I mission touched down in Ohio on November 24th. It had taken a long time to get to the stage at KSC where the two modules would be integrated. The two modules' mechanical and physical assembly took about four days. The combined spacecraft stack would be loaded into the Super Guppy transport aircraft, equipped with a unique Orion crew and service module horizontal transporter, or CHT, to carry the spacecraft into and out of the enormous hold of the plane. The 179th Airlift Wings home base in Mansfield, Ohio, is where the Super Guppy would touch down after flying there. The spaceship would need to be transported up to the road to Plumbrook Station in one day after being offloaded. Since the Guppy was first introduced in 1965, many other aircraft have been developed to carry incredibly heavy payloads. Since the 60s, there has been an ongoing battle between rival aircraft manufacturers to build an aircraft with the largest payload. But the biggest at the moment is Antonov 225 Maria. Super Guppy uses four Pratt & Whitney T34P7WA model turboprop engines. Super Guppy is no longer actively used today. Currently, only NASA continues to use this giant baby.